Hey, I'm Lisa and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to be productive even when you have a newborn. Today, I wanna to share with you how you can still work towards goals even if you've just had a brand new little baby. And all of this comes from um, just my last 10 years of balancing a business and now my seven children and you can get caught up on lots of videos I have on the topic of work-life balance in the cards. My first tip when you have just had a baby or if you're trying to balance work and little kids in general is to be gentle with yourself and lower your expectations a little bit. If you are a first-time mom or a new mom, don't forget what a physical exercise it is to have a baby and that your hormones are all out of whack, that you're not getting a lot of sleep, that physically you're going through a huge change. So to just be really gentle, because this can all really impact how much stuff you can get done in a day. So be really gentle with yourself. And I really want you to lower your expectations. Like you may have been able to accomplish 50 things in a day, whether it was at your work or whether it was when you weren't breastfeeding a baby or whatever. I want you to just cut that list. I love how Rachel Hollis calls it in her book, uh, Girl, Wash Your Face. She basically says, you have two things on your to-do list. <laughs> take care of yourself and take care of the baby. And I really think that is very sage advice. Obviously she's not saying that's the only things you do, but if that is the only thing you did today, consider it a success. So lower your expectations and just don't put too much pressure on yourself. My second tip is to make a schedule. I know this might sound absolutely insane. And even when I was sitting down and coming up with my own schedule, I was literally like, oh my gosh, is this crazy? Are people gonna think I am absolutely nuts for suggesting that someone should have a schedule when they've just had a baby? Okay, listen. I am such a believer in literally scheduling everything you do in life because I really do believe that there is freedom in order and that if you really want to accomplish certain things, you must carve out time in your calendar to do so. So I think that even if you're just with a brand new, brand new baby, like the little baby Phoebe is a month old, you've got to create some kind of a schedule. And what I think you sort of adjust is how demanding that schedule or how detailed that schedule is. So in one season in life, you might be able to accomplish many things in your calendar. So there might be many different entries. In a time like this, like I'm in now, my entries are actually a lot larger and just, and fewer. <laughs> so let me give you an example of what a schedule might look like when you have a newborn baby. My other children naturally wake up at seven o'clock. So from about seven to eight o'clock, um, we're having um, breakfast and then it's just kind of like quiet activities milling around. Often they will just pull out books and whatnot. Uh, my nanny starts at 8.30 and so then from 8.30 to nine, I take on some quiet prayer um, and quiet time. And so obviously my prayer time will get interrupted by a little baby. Um, but I kind of just go with the flow if I want to extend my prayer time a little bit because I had to adjust for um, changing a diaper or nursing, whatever I will. But to be honest, I can pray while I do those things. So oftentimes um, I just keep it to 8.30 to 9. From 9 to 11 is when I literally have in the calendar to go do something with my children. It's the time that I have the most physical energy. And so that's when Right now it's summertime and so uh, they're all home from school. My kids uh, had camps earlier and they're not in camps right now. So we will go to the park, we will go to the library. My outings are fairly simple. From 11 to one is when we kind of eat lunch. And again, it's kind of like quiet activities. The kids will just sort of, again, be all up here in the living room reading and whatnot. Um, and then from one to three is when I have me time. And that me time every day of the week right now is I just sort of pick what I want to do. Um, there are certain work things that I am tackling or if I want to just kind of take it easy and, and take a nap or whatever, uh, then I might do that then. 
From three to five is flex. So if I want to continue working, if I have the energy to, then I will. If I want to continue napping, because that is what's important at this time, um, I will. Or if I want to do something else with my kids, um, I might invite some kids, maybe just like my older ones, for example, or just the younger ones, and go and do some kind of an activity. Um, three to five is also when, if I want to like run any errands or whatever, it's kind of like the flex time. And then from five to seven is sort of like dinner and baths and getting ready for bed. And then from 7 p.m onward um kids are we start our bedtime routine by seven and then they're in their rooms with doors closed by 7 30. so that's my current schedule right now and that i have found to be so helpful because i don't feel guilty about for example like wanting to go and check some emails and all my kids are home asking me what we're going to do today and they've gotten used to knowing that okay yeah every morning is the time that we may do an outing we don't do an outing every day but we may do something um, and they are kind of in the rhythm of, yeah, between one and three mommies in her room on the computer or whatever. And the baby's with me um, and we kind of just go with the flow. But I promise you, there is freedom when there is order because it eliminates guilt. This is a massive thing. It eliminates guilt when you literally have it in the calendar when you are going to spend time with your children or spend time with your spouse. Um, I have my date nights also scheduled in there. So it's, it's like so helpful and something I really, really subscribe to if you are looking to have um, a sense of balance and a, a, an assurance that you're gonna get done the things that light you up and the things that are important to you. But you guys, I wanna pause it right here and just share with you that my schedule is based on my nine years of mothering experience, as well as that my temperament and personality are definitely hardwired for kind of go get them achievement. So I want you to be very realistic and very gentle with yourself. Go back and revisit point number one that I shared, but I still hold firm that I think setting certain things in a schedule allow you to feel a lot more freedom and a lot less guilt. So think about what you could implement with success um, and just take inspiration from what I've shared here, but make it your own. My third strategy to be productive when you have a newborn is to make a list. And this list is kind of just a list, meaning you throw all the things that you really would love to accomplish in a given period, say in the month of July, for example, and you just throw whatever it is on this list. I have an area in my home where I've got all these clipboards on shelves. That's where my list lives. And it's literally just things like, and it can be anything. It could be things like, work-related things, blog-related things, platform-related things, or I wanna clean my linen closet, or I wanna finally organize the medical supplies, etc., etc., etc. But these things can give you such a sense of accomplishment. Um, and the list just feels really good. Like when you can check something off, I know I get a real big um, sense of achievement um, and um, endorphins are released, I, I argue, when you are feeling like you're accomplishing some stuff. And then my fourth strategy for feeling productive when you have a newborn is to celebrate everything you accomplish. And let me tell you, that includes things like changing diapers and the number of times you've nursed the baby because it can feel like you're not doing anything when you have a baby at home. But oh my goodness, friends, what are you doing? You are providing nurture and care that only you can provide as this child's mom. You are keeping this child alive. Can we just like underline that? That is an accomplishment. And I think it's just so hard because it's such a shift, especially if you were working up until the point you gave birth. It can feel like this radical shift in, oh my gosh, I used to accomplish so much and now I don't accomplish anything. Friend, stop that thinking because the things that you accomplish are pretty incredible. Keeping another human being alive is an incredible achievement. So celebrate everything you accomplish in a day, including things as mundane as you took a shower, yay you. You blow dried your hair, you're amazing. You put on some makeup, oh my gosh, applause, applause. You changed like seven poopy diapers. Honestly, somebody give you an award. These are things to celebrate. These are accomplishments. And I just think you should celebrate everything even when it doesn't feel like maybe it was something 
to celebrate in terms of accomplishment. I hope this video was helpful to you. What are some things that you do to remain productive during various stages in your children's lives? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. And next week, I'm going to be back sharing some things that I still struggle with today. So come on back for that video. If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe and the bell button. Thanks so much for watching and cheers to designing your beautiful life.